Unitree has just unveiled a new H2 robot demo that's already terrifying experts. In the demo, the H2 humanoid robot appears to kick straight toward its own CEO's head during a live demonstration. It looks like everything goes wrong until you see what actually happens. Many are already calling it a real-life Terminator. Hey guys, welcome to Next Gen AI. This week, AI steps into dangerous territory. Let's get started. The demo starts with something you'd expect from a martial arts movie, not a robotics lab. The H2 performs a front-flying kick with shocking fluidity. But then, things get personal. The robot executes that same flying kick. But this time, it is aimed directly at the head of Unitree's founder and CEO, Wang Xingxing. In the clip, Wang stands perfectly still as this 154-pound machine, about 70 kilograms, leaps into the air. The leg of the H2 comes inches from his face. One look at Wang's expression tells you everything you need to know. He looks like a man who knows exactly how much power is behind that mechanical limb. If that kick had connected, the consequences would have been severe. This isn't just a stunt for views, it is a demonstration of extreme precision and control. For a robot to leap and extend a limb toward a human target without hitting it requires massive computing power and incredibly fast actuators. And the demo quickly makes it clear that control is only part of the story. The H2 follows up with a 360-degree jump hook kick. Its target? A watermelon. The impact is instantaneous. The fruit doesn't just break, it shatters. This shows that the H2 isn't just moving its limbs, it is generating massive centrifugal force. That power becomes impossible to ignore when the test shifts to raw resistance. The team positions a 66-pound sandbag, about 30 kilograms, in front of the H2. The robot delivers a kick, and the bag swings into the air like it weighs nothing at all. They then replace it with a 132-pound bag, about 60 kilograms, roughly the weight of a small adult. The H2 kicks again, and the bag swings with ease. The comments on the video are already calling it the Terminator phase of development. One person noted that this kick could easily shatter a human skull. When you look at the specs, it makes sense. The H2 features high torque actuators, with the knee joints pushing out 360 newton meters of torque. This robot is a powerhouse in a 154 pound frame, about 70 kilograms. While Unitree is making waves with martial arts, they aren't the only ones proving that these machines are becoming physically superior to humans. Engine AI recently released footage that silenced everyone who thought their previous demos were fake. They showed their T-800 humanoid robot delivering a strike so powerful that it actually lifted their own CEO off the ground. Before we dive in, if you want real updates on humanoid robots and AI, subscribe to NextGen AI. We break down what actually matters. In this demonstration, CEO Zhao Tongyang wore full protective gear and held a padded shield. He stood face to face with the T-800. The robot locked onto the target, adjusted its footing, and unleashed an explosive kick. The blow was so heavy it sent Zhao flying backward onto the mat. This wasn't a push. It was a clean, engineered strike. The T-800 is built with leg actuators that deliver 450 newton meters of torque. That is even higher than the H-2. What is most impressive isn't just the kick itself, but the recovery. After the impact, the T-800 doesn't wobble. It doesn't fall over. Its center of gravity shifts in milliseconds. This is handled by a real-time feedback loop and gyroscopic sensors that allow for combat-level stability. While Unitree focuses on the destiny awakening of the H2 as a service and interaction platform, Engine AI is leaning into raw, rugged capability. This machine is being prepared for a robot boxer event, where humanoids will compete in physical challenges. We are moving past the era of robots that fall over when they hit a pebble. We are now in the era of robots that can take a hit and give one back twice as hard. However, Having all this power and precision doesn't mean things always go according to plan. Sometimes, the very technology designed to make these robots human-like leads to total disaster. This brings us to a viral incident involving the Unitree G1, the smaller sibling of the H2. The G1 is designed to be a highly advanced, low-cost humanoid built for AI training. It is famous for its kung fu-style demos, but one specific training session went viral for all the wrong reasons. The G1 uses a system where it can mirror human motion in real time. An engineer puts on a motion capture suit, and the robot copies every move he makes. It is a great way to teach a robot complex balance. In this session, the engineer decided to demonstrate a front kick. He lifted his leg and kicked forward. The G1, being a perfect student, mirrored the move exactly. The problem was the positioning. Both the man and the robot were facing the same direction. When the man kicked forward, the G1, standing right behind him, also kicked forward. 
The robot's foot swung up with perfect timing and struck the engineer directly in the groin. The man collapsed instantly in pain. But the story doesn't end there. Because the G1 was still in mirror mode, it saw the man double over and drop to the floor. It immediately copied the reaction. The robot bent forward and collapsed in the exact same way, as if it were sharing the pain of the kick it just delivered. The video exploded across social media. While it was hilarious, it revealed a deeper truth about where we are with robotics. The G1 didn't mean to kick the man, but its motion accuracy was so high that it performed a perfect strike on a target it wasn't supposed to hit. This highlights the real-world risks of testing. When you have a machine that can move as fast as a human and possesses mechanical strength, even a simple software loop can become dangerous. This is why the H2 training demos are so vital. Unitree isn't just teaching the robot to kick, they are teaching it to understand space, distance, and the presence of human beings. When you look at the H2, the T800, and the G1 together, a clear picture starts to emerge. We are seeing a massive shift in how humanoid robots are trained. In the past, engineers programmed every single joint movement. It was stiff and unnatural. Now, companies are using reinforcement learning and human-in-the-loop training. The H2 uses a quasi-serial mechanical design, which moves the heavy motors higher up the legs. This reduces the weight of the lower limbs, making them move faster and more like a biological leg. This design, combined with a flexion abduction rotation hip configuration, makes the robot much easier to train using AI. But the progress also highlights the current limitations. As seen in the G1 incident, these robots still lack common sense. They follow their programming perfectly, even if that programming leads to a foot in the groin or a near miss with a CEO's face. The intelligence part of the equation is still being refined. The hardware is ready for the world, but the software is still learning the rules of human society. And that's not all. Boston Dynamics has just unveiled a new atlas at CES 2026. And this time, the message is clear. This is not a demo robot. This is a product. This unveiling took place at CES 2026 as part of Hyundai Motor Group's broader AI and robotic strategy. On stage, Atlas was positioned not as an experiment or a research platform, but as a core component of Hyundai's long-term manufacturing vision. The goal is not replacement, but collaboration, using humanoid robots to handle repetitive, heavy, and hazardous tasks so human workers can focus on oversight, precision, and decision-making. Compared to earlier versions, the new Atlas looks and feels like a finished industrial machine. The old hydraulic atlas was powerful but loud, complex, and maintenance heavy. Even the first electric prototype shown in 2024 still looked like a lab system. The 2026 version is fully enclosed in industrial grade panels, quieter, cleaner, and clearly designed for factory floors instead of research labs. This is the short version of the shift. Hydraulics were impressive, but electric systems are scalable. Electric actuators are more efficient, more reliable, and practical for 24-7 operation. This change isn't about performance, it's about deployability. Atlas also brings serious mechanical upgrades. The robot features 56 degrees of freedom, with multiple fully rotational joints that allow movements humans physically can't do. It doesn't need to turn its whole body to reach or reposition. It can twist, rotate, and adjust its posture in place, which makes repetitive industrial tasks faster and more efficient. In terms of raw capability, Atlas is rated to lift up to 50 kilograms, placing it right in the range needed for real factory work like moving car parts, crates, and heavy tools. At the same time, it uses human scale hands with tactile sensing, allowing it to control grip force precisely. That combination Strength with touch sensitivity is critical. It means Atlas can handle both heavy components and delicate parts without switching tools or modes. Durability was clearly a priority in this version. Atlas is rated IP67, meaning it can handle water exposure and industrial washdowns. It's designed to operate in temperatures ranging from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius, covering everything from cold warehouse to hot factory environments. This isn't a robot that needs perfect conditions. It's built for the messy reality of industrial work. The CES stage demo reflected this shift in priorities. There were no stunts, no dramatic movements, and no choreography. Atlas walked out calmly, scanned the environment, 
and moved with deliberate, controlled motion. Boston Dynamics openly stated that the demo was remotely operated and that transparency mattered. In unpredictable environments like a CES stage, safety comes first. More importantly, this demo was used to highlight something new, simplified control. Atlas can now be guided through a tablet-based interface, allowing supervisors to intervene, guide tasks, or redirect the robot without specialized equipment. This is a major change. Humanoid robots no longer require P2-level expertise or complex VR systems to operate. That lowers the barrier for real-world adoption and makes Atlas usable by existing factory teams. If you're enjoying this breakdown, make sure to subscribe. We're covering many more major reveals coming straight from the CES 2026 stage. One of the most important announcements tied to Atlas was the confirmed partnership with Google DeepMind. Boston Dynamics has always led in hardware and physical control. DeepMind brings world-class AI reasoning. Together, the goal is to integrate Gemini Robotics Foundation models into Atlas, allowing the robot to understand natural language instructions and reason about tasks instead of following rigid scripts. In practical terms, this means Atlas won't need to be manually programmed for every movement. Instead of defining each step, operators could issue high-level commands like identifying a problem, selecting tools, and completing a task autonomously. This turns Atlas from a programmable machine into a learning system, one that improves over time through software updates rather than hardware redesigns. Hyundai has also laid out a clear roadmap for how Atlas will be deployed. The plan starts in controlled industrial environments and scales gradually. Initial deployments will focus on part sequencing at Hyundai's Meta plant in Georgia, where Atlas will organize and deliver components to assembly lines. This is repetitive, physically demanding work that fits perfectly with the robot's capabilities. By around 2030, Atlas is expected to move into more complex tasks such as component assembly, using dual-arm coordination and tactile sensing to fit parts together. Beyond that, the long-term vision is to assign Atlas to dangerous or ergonomically harmful tasks, heavy lifting, awkward positioning, or work in high heat or hazardous environments. The broader goal is a software-defined factory where robot fleets can be updated and reassigned as production needs change. Some concept visuals shown during the presentation sparked speculation about Atlas entering homes, but both Hyundai and Boston Dynamics quickly clarified the situation. There is no consumer version planned. These images were meant to illustrate long-term AI potential not product timelines. Atlas remains firmly focused on enterprise and industrial use, where it can generate real returns and prove its value at scale. The most important takeaway from CES 2026 is what Atlas didn't do. There were no backflips, and that absence says everything. This wasn't a step backward. It was a graduation. Atlas has moved beyond spectacle. It's now a tool designed to work, to integrate into existing systems, and to operate shift after shift alongside humans. Production has already begun, with early units committed to Hyundai and DeepMind. This is not a concept anymore. The era of showing what robots can do is ending. The era of showing what robots are doing has begun. China just revealed a robot that doesn't adapt with software alone. It physically changes its body while working. LimX Dynamics dropped something unusual into the robotics world. Tron 02. The concept? A robot that rewrites its own body depending on what you need it to do. Physical transformation, not software tricks. Sounds impressive on paper. Reality is harder. Most robots get built once and stay that way forever. One shape, one job, one set of capabilities. Frozen in place the moment manufacturing ends. So when LimX claimed Tron 02 could genuinely reshape itself, the question wasn't about the marketing pitch. It was whether this thing could actually hold together under stress. Because morphing isn't just about clicking parts together. There's weight distribution to manage, control systems that need to adapt instantly, safety protocols that can't break down every time the robot switches modes. That's the graveyard of modular robotics. Tron Aero 2 gets around this by committing to three distinct forms from day one. Same brain, 
three bodies, a stationary dual-arm workhorse, a wheeled leg hybrid for covering ground, or a full bipedal walker. These aren't cosmetic changes. Each mode handles completely different work, precision tasks, navigation across terrain, without the software losing its mind underneath. But being versatile doesn't matter if you're weak. MX proved their point in the most direct way possible. One demo shows Tron's O2 hanging from gymnastic rings, the kind athletes use for upper body conditioning. No legs attached, just arms gripping metal. The setup looks almost boring at first. Someone clips two water bottles to the frame. The robot performs a pull-up. Smooth, controlled, almost casual, like a warm-up exercise rather than a stress test. Then the stakes change completely. A woman sits down on a seat mounted to the robot's torso, her entire weight now suspended beneath the machine. Tron 02 pulls up again, lifting her completely off the ground. With nothing but arm strength, no leg assistance, no external rigging, just raw, repeatable mechanical power. Once you've got power covered, the next hurdle is responsiveness. Advanced machines don't break because they're weak. They break because humans can't work with them smoothly. Even tiny delays ruin coordination. Latency destroys precision work, especially in research where millimeters matter. Tron 02 handles this through near-instant teleoperation, around 100 milliseconds from human input to robot action. When you move, it moves. No waiting. No compensation for lag. It feels direct. Essential when you're training AI systems. Not just pushing hardware around, but LimX didn't stop at making the robot responsive. They rebuilt the entire workflow. Most robotics labs don't fail because of bad robots. They fail because everything's scattered. You collect data in one place. Label it somewhere else. Train your model on a different machine. Deploy through yet another system. Tron 802 folds all of that into one integrated vision language action platform. Everything happens in the same environment. Limax claims new users can start working with VLA models in two hours instead of weeks. That integration led to something nobody expected. Before we go further, quick reminder, the humanoid race is heating up fast. In just a few months, we're likely seeing Optimus Gen 3 for the first time. If you want those updates early, make sure you're subscribed.